You know, I've wondered, when future historians write about these days, will they look back on the person of Chancellor Angela Merkel as a bridge between two competing cultures, contesting over the European landmass? A benevolent mother figure for the poor of Africa and the Middle East, maybe even making a romantic animated cartoon of her, as Pocahontas is now portrayed in current pop culture? Or will she be seen as an imbecilic nation wrecker who sold her country, her people, and ultimately her continent for promises, self-delusions, a bottle of whiskey, and some beads? I guess only time will tell. Despite suffering losses in local elections on the 13th of March 2016, Chancellor Angela Merkel has doubled down that she will stay the course and continue to allow unlimited numbers of migrants to settle in Germany and be given access to the welfare state. Her party's losses are seen by pundits as a warning of dissatisfaction rather than any real shift to the right, which for many is almost unthinkable in Germany. Merkel's government claims that Germany will only be receiving a half million migrants per year for the next four years. They claim that by 2020 this will bring approximately 3.6 million migrants or thereabouts into Germany, a country of approximately 81 million. However, given her projections of 400,000 migrants for 2015 and the actual number being closer to 1.3 million, only her most ardent and diehard sycophants have confidence in her prognostication prowess. And even though it's still winter, more than 135,000 migrants have arrived in the first two months of 2016. And if they kept arriving at this current rate, without any increases of any kind, this would still total 810,000 for the year 2016. But let's be honest, Merkel has thrown open the gates to Europe's welfare system to all the world, and spring is coming. With warmer weather, the boats from North Africa and Anatolia will once again be swarming the Aegean and Mediterranean come April. In fact, Fabrice Leggeri, the executive director of Frontex, the EU border control organization, has bluntly stated that Europe must brace itself for at least another million migrants in 2016. He stated that walls and wire were no match for determined people and added, fences will stop no one. Or in layman's terms, the EU cannot stop this uncontrolled influx of migrants and has totally lost control of its borders. He added it would be a success if the refugee numbers for this year remain stable in comparison to 2015. Okay, so here is the point of this video, and I can't understand why this information is not being broadcast more widely. Merkel and her apologists coup. A few million are only a few compared to the 80 million or so people who currently live in Germany. But this is simply wrong because it does not take into account the age demographic which the influx is affecting. The numbers released by the German Federal Office for Migration and Refugees show that the migrants are almost exclusively limited to people between the ages of 20 and 35 years of age, or even younger. Thus, a more accurate picture of the situation can be obtained when it's compared to the already existing German population within this same age group. Now, you can do this yourself. Get a calculator and head on over to OECD STAT, which includes data and metadata for the countries that are part of the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. The OECD STAT has a wealth of information on member nations, but the one that concerns us for this video is the breakdown of age of Germany's male population, and the numbers we have are from 2013. So we're going to do some rough math here. As of 2013, Germany had a population of approximately 81 million people. But total population doesn't give you a real understanding of the breathtaking speed by which Germany, and with her, Europe will be irrevocably changed. In 2013, these are the numbers of males in Germany for each of the age groups listed. So from ages 20 to 34, there are 7,586,541 men in Germany. But hold on, 12.3% of these German citizens are of an immigrant background, the largest group of which are Turks. And another 7.7% .7 of these are foreign nationals. These numbers add up to about 1.5 million men within this age group. So when you do the math, you get about roughly 6 million German men within this most critical of demographics. 
So if, as Legere of Frontex states, the best possible scenario or best case situation is that migration numbers can be stabilized at their 2015 rate without any kind of family reunification, we're looking at roughly 1.3 million migrants per year pouring in. And Germany is getting scant help from other EU nations or with Merkel's proposed quota system. So now here is where it gets interesting. 72% of the migrants that have arrived are adult men, while just 13% are women and 15% are children. Doing the math again, we get a number that comes out just shy of about 1 million men that have entered Germany in 2015. To put these numbers into perspective, the combined German military, its army, navy, and air force have a total of 234,000 soldiers, sailors, and airmen or a quarter of the number of migrant men Angela Merkel is encouraging to descend upon Europe every year. So let's work it out. There are already roughly 1.5 million male German citizens of immigrant background, plus the million that have arrived in 2015. Add to that a million this year and for the next five years. The real figure may even be higher. It's perfectly reasonable to expect a total of asylum-seeking men as well as Germans of a foreign background in this age group to reach around 6.5 million by 2020, if current trends continue. This is not taking into account any family reunification or the higher fertility rate of people from the Middle East or Africa have. In other words, German men in this demographic will be a minority in their own country from 2020 onward forevermore. And let me stress, there is no going back once this point has been reached. But on top of all of this, when family reunification is factored in, the Muslim population will nearly quadruple to an astonishing 20 million within the next five years, according to a demographic forecast by Bavarian lawmakers. These numbers have all been verified by an analysis carried out by Professor Adorjan Kovacs from the Goethe University at Frankfurt am Main and was published in the European magazine in German under the title Truths About the Refugee Crisis. And actually, his conclusions were even more severe and dire than the simplistic model I've demonstrated thus far. Kovac rightly notes that you have to think ahead 30 years. If the majority, that is, more than 50% of those now living in Germany are elderly and will have died within that time, it takes no imagination to get an idea of the composition of the future German population. This transformation will involve societal upheaval on an unimaginable scale. But it's full speed ahead for the Merkel government despite internal evaluations that lay it out plainly. We are importing Islamic extremism, national and ethnic conflicts of other peoples, as well as a different understanding of society and law. German security agencies are unable to deal with these imported security problems and the resulting reactions from the German population. We've examined some of these crises affecting Europe in previous videos and suggest those unfamiliar with the current situation spend some time reviewing them. Something to consider is that population programs such as those proposed by the Department of Economic and Social Affairs at the United Nations, that migration be used to replace population groups in the industrial north, or simply the national imperative for mass importation of people from very disparate cultures, what the transnational and national organizations and governments fail to realize is that people and nationalities are not light bulbs. You can't just dump millions upon millions of people with totally alien values and cultures into other groups' traditional territories and expect no friction. Insofar as Germany, the social, economic, and cultural implications of these numbers is nothing short of nation-ending. The country of Germany may survive in some form, but the people, the German people who make Germany, well, German, will no longer be in control of their social and political destiny for themselves, their children, and their children's children, ever again. Despite the migrants' sexual rampage of Cologne and other cities across Europe on New Year's Eve 2016, or the steep rise in violent crime including sexual assaults on children as well as women, Despite heightened anxiety over jihadist terrorism similar to the Islamist mass murder in Paris in November 2015, 
as well as the growing and very dangerous gender imbalances that we've touched upon in previous videos that are beginning to bubble in both Sweden and Germany and the serious social consequences of which. Chancellor Merkel has already stated that election or no election, she will not change course in what will likely define her legacy and will not put any kind of upper limit on the number of migrants Germany will accept. There will be no federal election until at least autumn 2017 and at the moment there seems to be no political figure that looks poised to defeat her bid for another term as Chancellor. Yes, a lot of things could happen between now and then. All of the variables could change, but the point of this presentation is not to state what will be, but what could be if current trends are not immediately halted and reversed. The conclusion is inevitable. If Merkel is not stopped, German youth may be a minority in their country in the very near future, and according to Professor Kovacs, Germany as a whole will no longer be German within a generation. It's also very likely that Merkel and her policies will provoke such backlash as to destabilize the entire continent. And even if these figures prove not to materialize, and there's a good chance they won't, the damage will have already been done. That millions upon millions of Muslim men who will have grown accustomed to living fat off the state will just pick up and go home peacefully when asked also does not hold much promise. Muslims have been trying to wrestle control over Europe for over a millennium and they're not going to give up this foothold for Islam provided to them by Merkel. And one way or another, the fruits of Germany's female chancellor's policies are not going to end well. These are civilizational shaking events in the history of the West, and they'll affect all. What we are witnessing, if nothing is done, is the end of one tribe of people and their story, and the story of a new tribe taking possession of the lands of the West and weaving their own new narrative. This has already happened in many cities throughout the West. Brussels will never be Belgian again. Paris will never be French again. London will never be English again. Malmo will never be Swedish again. Amsterdam will never be Dutch again. But now the scale of importing vibrant diversity is actually beginning to transform entire nation states. Whether you think the demographic, social, religious, and cultural transformation of Germany and ultimately every country in the West is for good or ill is irrelevant. It's happening. Sweden and Germany are just further along, but the mass transformative effect of cultural enrichment is already here and it's only accelerating in all Western countries. But as I've already stated and will repeat, nothing is set in stone. The West doesn't have to be merkled if it doesn't want to be. It's how this crisis is dealt with now that will determine the outcome for not only ourselves, but for the future generations to come. Thanks for watching. As this was purely an informational video, please consider subscribing as I'll be analyzing the causes and reasons behind this and other topics regularly. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.